Hey everybody, are you ready to reopen and get life back to normal? I know I sure am. But what does reopening even look like? And what are the things that should be followed or planned for? Well, I want you to know that over on the Payments Professor website, there's an entire series on pandemic planning. And the attendees are raving about the class, but now asking if we could add to the course and have something on reopening. Also, I've had requests on LinkedIn and YouTube, so I decided I'd better make it available to everybody. Are you ready to reopen? Well, stay tuned. Hey everybody, what does reopening look like? Well, as part of pandemic planning, reopening will need to be part of your policies and procedures that are included. First and foremost, I have to say, it's actually more about ensuring the safety of your account holders and your staff more than anything else. Reopening your institution can also vary greatly based on your geographic location because maybe you're in like a remote location or maybe you're in a bustling downtown district. Your average member could be different too and can play into it. If you are, for example, working with account holders that are of a higher age, maybe even prone to exposure, or you're in an area where the breakout was higher than average, that could play into how you're going to be reopening. It can also depend on if you're reopening a branch or if you're reopening an operations center. All of these factors must be considered, but let's look at some specific questions to ask yourself. And by answering these, you should be able to create some appropriate reopening guidelines, policies, and procedures for your unique situation. To begin with, one of the first things I would say is get your legal counsel engaged regarding your reopening plan. I didn't say consult with or just talk to, I said engage. Engage, actually spend some time with them and look over every aspect of what is to happen and make sure they give you approval. Opening procedures that are conducted incorrectly could lead to legal issues and reputation risk. And none of us wanna see that happen. We have to get legal involved right away, right from the beginning. There are too many things that can go wrong if reopening isn't handled correctly. They will be able to assist you in what to do and even what the plan should look like in your area. And that takes us to, well, what are the federal, state, or local requirements regarding access to your bank or credit union? You see, different states and different locations within each state have different timelines for reopening. Find out what yours is. Does it include a phase process and what is allowed within each phase? There is no doubt that prior to reopening, there will be a need for a deep clean of the lobby within the bank and the credit union, as well as other high traffic areas prior to reopening. Cleaning practices, at a minimum, should meet the current Center for Disease Control and Prevention COVID-19 guidance. This is something that you will either hire an outside service for, or you want to make sure your internal custodial staff is trained and prepared to conduct based on those standards that are required. And once it is clean, we need to be prepared to keep it clean. So you're gonna to have to have a plan to sanitize hard surfaces throughout the day, especially in those high traffic areas. In your plan, decide who will do this and when it will be done. Will it be irregular intervals, such as hourly or every other hour, or randomly based on traffic? I have seen locations that will wipe down everything once it's been touched like say the pin pad after every use and before the next person can even touch it. Another area to think about is the area where your members and account holders will be. So you will need to install partitions to buffer between the bankers and the customers. Many teller lines are already prepared for this as they've had to have protective barriers for potential robberies and robbery protection in place for years. How's this gonna work though in your institution? What if you're going to be meeting with someone in an office or cubicle area? Those areas may need to have protective barriers installed and be mindful of how these are in place. I can say that I have been to some places where they have the partitions installed, but it wasn't thought out as to how it's gonna be used or what if I need to use the keypad for verification due to the location or positioning and suddenly we're both being exposed to each other. You may also want to provide facial coverings. Whoa, yeah, when it comes to exposure, how's that facial covering going to be handled? Maybe in the close quarters, you do give facial coverings. I want you to know, I actually experienced this at a men's high-end clothier. Um, I needed to go in and replenish the bow tie stock, let's say. 
And they had a policy for everyone who entered without face coverings, they were giving it to them and requiring them. But will you require it? And also, will you provide hand sanitizer for employees or for your account holders, the visitors to your location? If you do, you need to have it documented. Where will it be? Will it be at the main entrance, in the teller line, at an individual teller station, in every office, or just randomly throughout the facility if it's provided at all? And that providing of facial coverings and hand sanitizers, they're just the beginning of some of the strategic plans and practices your institution will have to have in your pandemic plan for reopening. Make sure that you communicate and you train all team members regarding COVID-19 strategic plans and what your facility's practices will be. I'd say to also make sure you are consistent among all branches. We don't wanna have different practices at different branches that can lead to inconsistencies. So make sure you are consistent and that information is communicated to staff to keep them informed of expectations and of procedures. We also want to make sure our account holders are informed, and that means we will have to do things like post clear signage regarding the institution's COVID-19 requirements. What are those requirements going to be? That will be things like how is protective facial covering requirements to be met, which could vary depending upon federal, state, or local regulations and authorities. You're going to have to determine, will you require, will you require and enforce or will you just encourage facial coverings? We've actually got more of this topic coming up because it's very important. But another piece of signage, that's gonna be the social distancing practices, maintain six feet away rule. And the routing of foot traffic. We are seeing this in many locations. You go into a store and it's like being in a downtown district of a major city where it's all one way streets designated to keep traffic moving. But in this case, it's to keep social distancing practices in place. Will you have areas roped off to control people in certain directions and to help limit interactions? This could start at the point of where they enter the building to the point of where they exit. And there are things that need to be considered before we even let them in the building. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to have to cover that one in the next video because we've already covered a lot and there is more to come. So make sure to check out part two. If you wanna make sure though you don't miss any of our future classes, then please check out our YouTube channel or go to the Payments Professor website. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe. You can also head over to paymentsprofessor.com to be able to sign up for our full courses, which we break up into short videos like this to be able to help professionals like you succeed in the world of electronic payments. We greatly appreciate your support and just so you know, if there is a video or a topic you'd like to have made, all you have to do is leave a comment on YouTube or on LinkedIn, or you can email me, kevin at paymentsprofessor.com. We are here to help and to serve you. And we do so by making education fun, entertaining, and engaging. See you in a future class.